there always have been artists dedicated to turn the viewer inside out, so he can worship the so-called ugliness before the beauty. I think Friedrich Nietzsche put it best in his book Twilight of the Idols when he wrote In the beautiful, man posits himself as the measure of perfection. A species cannot otherwise but thus affirm itself alone. Man believes the world itself to be overloaded with beauty and he forgets himself as the cause of this. He alone has presented the world with beauty, with a very human, all too human beauty. The judgment, beautiful, is the vanity of his species, for a little suspicion may whisper his question into the skeptic's ear. Is the world beautiful because man think it is? Who knows what he looks like in the eyes of a higher judge of beauty? H.R. Giger was born in 1940 in Chur, capital city of Graubünden, the largest eastern Swiss canton. His father, a pharmacist, viewed art as a breadless profession and strongly encouraged him to enter pharmacy. Nevertheless, Giger refused and in 1962 moved to Zurich, where he studied architecture and industrial design. The main tenets of industrial design in the 70s were functionality, purpose and service. As an aspiring fine artist, he had to learn to use drawing as a tool, a tool to invent and transfer his vision in the mind of a device, machine, structure or system to the blank page. He also had to learn how to manufacture, engineer and build mock-ups, models, and functioning prototypes. After successfully graduating from the university, he worked briefly as interior designer, after which he published his work in underground magazines like Hotcha, Clue, Agitation and Cthulhu News. So he was certainly familiar with Lovecraft's cosmic horror. In his early work, like in the series of paintings entitled Passage, he shows us a vision of the industrial landscape. The dull yet overwhelming structures, uneven blocks of concrete, with steel rods and pipes sticking out of the massive buildings. And we can almost see the piercing smell of chemicals that are burning in our face. Many artists were trying to warn us of the unsettling state of our environment that we live in. The modern man is constantly surrounded by factories, houses, tables, windows, frames, locked up behind walls, all constructed in 90 degree angles to ensure us of a fixed, sturdy surrounding. But fundamentally, the physical world, nature, is fluid, 
shaky with curves and bulges, slippery and wet. So in the early 1970s, he began displaying his distinctive style, heavily influenced by Anthony Gaudi and Alberto Martini, and also Salvador Dali, with whom he met in his home in Calakesh. Dali, ein um, sehr nett, sehr höflicher Mensch, sehr, uh, er hat mich immer uh, als Otrischjäng, <lacht> <lacht> er hat wahrscheinlich den Fuchs gemeint, ja. nicht den Ernst Fuchs, also ein Panther Otrischjäng <lacht> und so, uh, ich wollte immer mit ihm irgendwie, ich bin eigentlich nicht dazu gekommen, mit ihm zu sprechen, richtig, ich weiß nicht, der, uh, was war und Sehr angenehmer Mensch. Sag mal, er, er hat Sie als Surrealist anerkannt. Sie? Also Dali hat Sie, Hans von Aha, Sie, als, ja, ja, ja. ja er, er mochte meine Sachen sehr, denn er hat mir noch ein Vorwort geschrieben, das heißt ja. gezeichnet. Und er wollte von mir einen Hund, also einen Panzer für einen Hund, der in einem meiner Kataloge hatte den gesehen und er wollte er für sein Museum. Und ich habe ihm den zukommen lassen und der Hund ist verschwunden. <lacht> der ist nirgendwo war, war, war der mehr zu finden. Hat wahrscheinlich jemand seiner diversen Sekretäre abgezügelt. Ja. His realistic, biomechanical style of his works instantly spawned a whole genre which he alone mastered. Capable of bringing morbid fetishes surrealistic totems and alien pornography right into our bedrooms, onto our TV screens. He understood the anatomy of the terrible. He knew the physiology of fear, the exact sort of line and proportion that connects up with latent instincts, hereditary memories of fright, also the fine nuances of gangrenous grey. Giger's art was monochromatic, desaturated to emphasize the lack of emotion, or putting it differently, to block the viewer from connecting or emphasizing with his work. On an emotional way, the man as an omnivorous hunter-gatherer can easily connect with felines or other predators. But it is a strange notion for us to put ourselves in the head of a cold-blooded creature. And I was shown the book Necronomicon um, in Los Angeles, in fact by O'Bannon, who brought it in, and I nearly fell off the desk, said, that's it, and uh, why look farther? And uh, so that's how I saw it, it was as simple as that. I've never been so certain about anything in my life. And what impressed you most about his work? Um, again, it's one of those things where I think it, the, there are a lot of, say, artists in this area and um, of surreali surreali surrealism or, or whatever you like to call it. And I think Giga has an extra quality of, uh, I think, one of the most frightening things of all is of a quality of reality. Um, combined with a sort of his own form of fantasy. And I think that's what makes it stronger, is the, is the reality, not the fantasy. With his book Necronomicon, he created something special and unique 
and managed to stir up many creative heads all around the world. Nowadays art books are hugely popular and many artists publish them on a regular basis. Dann haben Sie einen Oscar gewonnen. Ja, das auch so. Ähm, Daran habe ich überhaupt nie gedacht. Ne? Äh, wie fühlt man sich denn, wenn man einen Oscar gewinnt? Ja, komisch irgendwie. Ich weiß nicht, das war eigentlich eben... <lacht> die haben gesagt, ja, das wäre wahnsinnig, da würde sich alles ja. verändern und so. Und ich habe dann gemerkt, dass es sicher... Man hat mich mehr gekannt, mehr mhm. eingeladen und so. Aber eigentlich war es für, für mein äh, Fach, also meine, die Malerei mhm. oder die Kunst, die Feinart, war es negativ. Weil man hat mich sofort ja, in, die Ecke <lacht> in die Ecke von Filmausstatter ja. gebracht. Und, äh, und dann, das hat die Seriosität mhm. vom, Mal, vom, vom Künstler mhm. irgendwie, hat das, hat das einen schlechten Einfluss gehabt. Und die Museen haben nicht mehr so gekauft. Nicht? Und, äh, ja, und ich kam in Boulevardblättern ja. und, und so Zeitungen. Und dann hat man nicht mehr über mein Werk ge gesprochen, sondern über mich selber. <lacht> The Necronomicon, published 1977, served as the visual inspiration for director Ridley Scott's film Alien. Giger's first high profile assignment, which earned him the 1980 Oscar for Best Achievement in Visual Effects for his designs of the film's title character, including all the stages of its life cycle. Giger's other well known film work includes his design for Poltergeist 2. Alien free species, as well as the legendary unmade movie of Alejandro Jodorowsky's Dune. Taking this unfinished picture, for example, we can see the various stages of the development in his work. Working with the airbrush requires confident motions. With broad, opaque strokes, he constructs the main composition, and as he continues to spin his web like a spider, some forms emerge by themselves. Given a lifetime of drawing and designing, he doesn't have to plan his picture or make certain preparations. With a little amount of controlled accident, he just needs to react from his unconscious, and enroll his nightmares directly under the wall like a wallpaper. Further in development, he uses stencils and works out every minute detail, giving the flat surface 3D pattern. Although his style remained constant after Necronomicon, he explored many different approaches. For example, reimaginings of famous works by other artists. In the same way Picasso did with Velázquez, Giger transformed Jackson Pollock and Arnold Becky. For some of his work he used models, and gave up traditional perspective, adopting often ancient iconography. Giger's early fascination with ancient Egyptian culture stayed with him his entire life. The stress and excessive demands of modern life, the alienation and loss of deeper meaning in life and its values are all essential elements of Giger's representation of the 20th century, the merging of dangerous elements of mechanical contraptions, of the technological world with human salaciousness, strikes a deep chord within the modern zeitgeist. 
Unfortunately, yet again, the great majority of fine art galleries failed to fully embrace this hugely talented artist during his lifetime. But, due to his sensitivity to the nightmares of our time, he deserves to be integrated in the canon of art history, and like Hieronymus Bosch gave the Middle Ages an appropriate hell, Giger gave us ours.